Hey, it's Candace from Grow Local. Today we're going to talk about container gardening. Once again, we get to do our program in this lovely greenhouse surrounded by all these brilliant spring colors. Because they weren't kidding, it is a longer, cooler, wetter spring. But today we're going to look at cozy green, taste good things. I have some pots that I just picked up at the dollar store. Makes it really nice and inexpensive. There are all kinds of basil that you can get. <laughs> no way can they go outside yet. You have to leave them indoors. It's way, way, way too cold. They're gonna go underneath your tomatoes probably late May, early June. But for now, you can still get them, grow them in on your windowsill. You can either just pop them in the pots like this and use them just like that. They'll grow fine in those pots until it's time to put them in the garden outside. Or if you find them like this and you wanna Toss it in the pot, you just add some soil. Try to get an indoor planter box mix if you're doing these inside. Anything that says good for indoor plants is gonna do you just fine. The reason behind that is it's been pasteurized, heated, treated, so that you're not gonna get bugs in the house. These little squares usually have about five plants. So I'm just gonna tip it over. And then it's just like breaking a bun apart or opening up a hot dog bun. You just put your fingers and you peel and you can feel the roots separating. It's almost like a little bit of Velcro. You're going to tuck it in there, probably add a little more soil. I know you're going to add a little more soil. There's no doubt about it. And there, he's good to go. And I'm just going to pop this over because I want to do it in another container in a bit. Now, I've made a big fat mess, but that's okay, because that brings me to a little side note, and that's saucers, you guys. You should always have a saucer underneath your pots, otherwise when you go to water them, you are gonna have water all over the tabletop, the counter, wherever you've got them. These, again, are little cheap glass ones. If you don't have anything, just use the lid off your yogurt or your sour cream tubs, anything that's just going to collect the water and save your furniture. You can get, and this is something to be aware of, you can get the terracotta pots and terracotta saucers. These ones are not glazed. That means when you go to water your pot, the water's going to soak through and it's going to get the saucer wet. There's going to be condensation and wet on the bottom and it's not doing your furniture any good. So try to look for the ones that have got a glaze on the inside. They'll work much better. The other thing, if you've got containers and <laughs> it's unglazed, you don't need a whole lot of distance. If you are keeping your containers out on a patio or a deck, whether you're just house proud or you're renting and you don't wanna leave them with your damage deposit, you don't really need anything thicker than a popsicle stick. Just put it down and put your saucer on top. That allows for airflow. Just like in the plastic ones you can buy, they've got the little feet. That's designed so that the air goes underneath and you don't get the mold in your mildew on your deck or on your patio or on your furniture. So I didn't want to forget to talk about that because sometimes I get going and I forget where I've been and what I've been talking about. So those are my saucers. And there is the basil. Something you can do with the kids if you want. Sometimes you've just got old buckets that they've gotten for Easter or for birthdays or old things, old buckets that you used at the beach and they're not gonna use them this year. You can take a bucket like this. I filled it with soil already. You should by rights take a screwdriver or something and make sure that there's a hole in the bottom. In this case, I figured I would plant up some mint. And I guess I should have done that a little different, but I will, I'll give you the little hint thing in a bit. Yeah, I like it that way. You wouldn't think you'd be so fussy putting things in the ground or putting things in baskets, but you are. This is a chocolate mint that I'm putting in here. Doesn't matter what kind of mint you're growing, please keep it in containers, you guys. 
it follows that old adage of, it's easy to grow. Everybody can grow it, which in turn means it's really invasive. It grows everywhere. It spreads by runners, and you'll have mint growing through the front lawn, the back lawn. And in this, I am going to add a little more soil. And then I'm going to put a little bit of soil in here. Not a whole lot. But this is a garlic chive. So I thought this is a nice chocolate mint. Smells just great. This is a little garlic chive. It's going to grow up and it's going to have lovely purple flowers on it. So it kind of goes with the pot. And if you can see all the little black things on here, those are all the seeds. When they sprouted, they still get stuck on the ends. And I just think it looks kind of cool until they fall off. This is what I wanted to say. When you are transplanting plants out of a pot, what you want to do is just lightly squeeze the pot. And all you're doing is making sure that the soil is releasing from the edges of the pot. You're not massaging the roots. You're not squishing it to death. And then the other thing you do is make an L with your hand. Put it so that the plant is protected in here. Tip it over. And then you're grabbing the soil ball. You haven't broken any stems. You haven't lost any flowers, and you've got a real good grip on it. And I'm actually putting it in this little pot here. I'll add a little more soil. And when you tamp down the soil in your pots, or anywhere, you're just getting rid of the air pockets around the roots. You're not making a brick, so don't push too hard. And then, I'm just going to tuck this in here. And I have kind of a tiered looking thing where I'm going to have the mint growing and it's going to get fairly long. And I'm going to have this lovely bunch of chives with purple flowers and it's going to look really sharp. Might be fun for the kids, it's fun for me. So there's another one. Oh, you know what? In case you think that's kind of boring for a while, these are edible. Let's tuck in a pansy. These have been in the pots for a little bit, so I'm just going to tear off the roots. Sometimes if the plants have been in the pots too long, the roots start growing in circles, and then they think that's the only way that they can grow. So if you scratch them up or tickle them, then you can just pop them in, and they'll start spreading the roots out other ways. And I'll grab one more. Same, same. I'm sorry, Michelle, I promise I will sweep your floor when I'm done. And that looks even prettier, don't you think? Now, what else was I going to show you? Oh, these are terracotta pots. We talked about those. Um, they look good. They might look a little boring. But you can use the acrylic paints. If you paint them up with the acrylic paints, it dries in about five minutes, you guys. It's a really easy craft to do. You can use all your artistic talents on it. And I know I flip things around really fast. And <laughs> I tour also. I also try to go slower, just so that you guys can see what I'm doing and see what I'm showing you. But this acrylic paint, when you put it on, it takes like five minutes to dry. And in all honesty, it will stay outside in the elements and still look good for well, the one I had outside lasted for five years before it finally got too grunty looking and I had to take it out. If you use these style pots inside, you might want to just find these kinds of inserts. They're little plastic ones. They just pop in the pot like that. You can put your soil in, you can put your plant in. Looks really good. The advantage to having that little plastic liner is that when you go to water your plants, your pot's not going to look all wet, which really isn't a big issue for most people, but some people it is. You've got just wet colored clay from here down and dry, and then you don't like it, then use an insert. Put your soil in there, put your plant in there, and you're going to be just fine. And did I talk about cover and holes? I don't think I did. So here I have another stack. 
and you're going to get your pots. This is going to be a strawberry tower, and it's got lots of holes. If you have landscape fabric, you can cut off a piece and just pop it in there. If you don't, use your coffee filters. They work just beautifully. All you need to do is keep the soil in there so it's not draining all over the place. A lot of people will tell you to put rocks in the bottom of your planter pots and they'll usually tell you to use about an inch, but they're changing the story on that one. They have now decided that the soil in your pots, the bottom couple of inches, the bottom two inches typically stay saturated, whether you've got drainage in there or not. So if you've put yourself in an inch worth of, of rock in the bottom for drainage, and then that saturated level is another two inches, you've just lost all that growing room because for the most part, most roots will not stay in that damp, damp, really wet soil. They don't like wet roots. So you've just lost a whole, you've lost a whole lot of planting area in your pot. So coffee filters, landscape fabric, they work. Even if you're doing it like this, I have a coffee filter in the bottom of this one and I filled it up with some soil. And then I have another pot. I did put a coffee filter, but I don't really need to because the only place it's gonna drain is into the soil below it. So it's not a real big issue. And then I'm gonna put some soil in this one. Now, strawberries, you know that you can get them in these little pots. And they usually run you, depending on where you're at, anywhere from $3.50 to $5 a plant. And right now you'll find in the stores a lot of them, and outside in the yard, are already flowering, and you're starting to get the little berries. Now, if this is your first year with them in the garden, they are going to tell you, snip off the flowers. It's really hard to do. Nobody likes doing it, but it allows your plant to get a bigger, stronger root base, and then you're going to end up getting more strawberries in the long run. You only have to do it for the first couple weeks, and then you're fine. Squeeze, 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 and pull. And there again, you can see how the roots are starting to go in a circle, so I'll just tease them out. Pop them in there. And the infamous, add a little more soil. But that's how I would do that one. Now, that's one plant, and that cost me $3.50. Or, if you want, you can go out and buy these little bundles, and this is called bare root. They come in a little piece of landscape fabric. Hey, guess what? You got the liner for your pots. Just pull it apart. And it's really quite messy. But there are your strawberry starts, all with a real good set of roots on them. And a lot of times, a bit of green growing. So on these ones, you're just going to pop them in the soil. And you want it so that the soil comes. This is called the crown up here. So you're going to want to have the soil come up about there. Okay? Not up there and not too far down. And you'll be able to figure it out because you can see where the roots are coming down and you just want to make sure that the tops of those are covered. Okay? And you're going to put them around the edge of your pot. I will just do a couple here. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the next pot. I put the soil in here first simply because it's really boring watching somebody put soil in pots. So you guys, you can do it whichever way is comfortable for you. You can hold the plant up and pop the soil around it. Make sure it's all the way up to the crown. Tuck them in. That guy's going to sit there. And you'll put them all the way around the edge all the way around the edge and leave about four four inches in between and then one two and where did this go there he is right there right in front of me and that will be your strawberry tower 
these guys will grow. They'll grow well. Um, you will get fruits off them this year. And they will send off runners. Your best bet is to pinch off the runners. You really don't need them. These new guys will give you a really good, they'll give you a, an okay crop the first year. Year number two and year number three, you should get a really good crop of strawberries. Year number four, it might be like year number two. So, or even year number one. And if that's the case, then you can let the runners grow and you can snip them off because those are the babies and you can plant those guys. And then when these guys run out of juice, you've already got your otherwise, your new established plants ready to go. So that's a little strawberry tower. If your tower is really tall, there are holes in the bottom of your pots, run a bamboo stick through them and it just adds a little more stability. Here, this is just a chopstick thing. But you would stick it through if I can find a hole. Oh, that's because I've got the cloth in there. So you'll just run it through and it holds it in place a little better, okay? And that would be the strawberry tower.